whatever you want to say. Uh, I was going to be totally false and facetious. You couldn't, you and, couldn't be if you tried. That's asshole. why I picked you. Right. Let me know when you're yeah, ready. Yeah, I have a problem with that. Yeah. You ready? Okay. Hi, my name is Mary, and I'm here at Solano with my friend. Farrell Brooks. I'm just going to have you bring it right to your breastbone. Right here. Right there. Right here. Not, not right against your body. Right here. So you talk over the mic. I'm talking over the mic, and then when I pass it to him, it's the same. Same thing. Yeah. We got. We got it. Okay. It's hard to. It's hard to get it in here because of the sound. The, uh, the, the fans. I know. There's like five thousand of them. Ready? Hi, I'm here at Solano State Prison with my friend Farrell. How you doing? Well, Farrell, tell me a little bit about why you like doing San Quentin. Excuse me, Solano Shakespeare. So, um, I, I, I believe it started with some of the silly exercises we used to do, and um, it forced you to just throw yourself into these silly little exercises. And what I learned is in these silly exercises, I was learning how to act. And so I began to learn this without consciously thinking I was learning something. And how, how long have you been doing this? Ooh, do, 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 do. Um, this is our seventh or eighth season. Um, then we're a little behind because of COVID. So this might be like the ninth or tenth year or something like that. Yeah. So it seems to me, your comments after the play, that you got a lot more out of it than just learning Shakespeare or how to act. What are the other lessons you learned from participating in this activity? So, um, learning to trust people, um, working with others, um, believing in, in a process. Uh, you have goal setting. Um, you have s making time and 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 focusing um, on an event. You you got to be resilient. Like we had some some COVID uh, quarantine moments, but to um, persist. Um, this wasn't the ideal situation or circumstances, but um, to continue on. Um, we had people that, um, frankly, couldn't even read that well. And so how do we do this and, and pull this off? So just continuing and um, trusting the process and helping and aiding and assisting and um, not giving up and being empathetic and just being willing um, to do the best that you can with what you have. Wow, that's a mouthful. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to, for you to share your thoughts with me and to celebrate what we've got going on here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Another victim. Why? You what? Okay. That's okay. Okay. Who else can I get? I get Alejandro, but he can't speak. He can't speak English. Can I interview you? Ladies and gentlemen and gentle folks, this is Ralph Knight. Hi, my name is Mary, and I'm here at Solano State Prison with my friend. Hi, how you doing? My name is Bruce, and I'm also here at Solano with my friends. <laughs> so you just finished a Shakespeare play that you've been learning here at San Quentin, and your performance was amazing. So tell us a little bit about your experience. Well, would you like me to hold that? You got it? Well, for me, uh, it was, for me, it was challenging. Sorry about that. Uh, I stepped out of my, myself and my abilities when I was growing up, when my father left me. I didn't think I could do this. So one day I saw this play on the level three, and I met Pharaoh and Mrs. Leslie 
of Marion Shakespeare. They told me to try it. I was very reluctant. She told me she wouldn't give me a big spot. So I started off being a, a security guard. I didn't see this coming. In the third place, she put me in the second lead role. I was thinking about leaving. I said, I don't know if I could do this. But thanks to Pharaoh and the fine young men, Mr. Wynn, they helped me overcome that fear. And that's why I'm here today. I understand this is a challenge for me, but I never want to give up because I want to be a success in my life. And that is be successful to be a better person. Today, that's what Shakespeare has done for me. Giving me so much high self-esteem of myself, self-worth, that I feel good today. Well, I have to tell you, as the number two spot, you did an amazing job. You were awesome. And no one would ever know that you had any self-doubt or any low self-esteem at all, because you took command of that role, and you owned it, and you were amazing. So what else did you get besides learning a little Shakespeare out of this experience? What else did I get? Well, I got a lot of uh, vulnerability. Uh, I got a lot of love. And I also have a lot of uh, patience out of this. And what else is growth. Growth is one beautiful thing I look at today. Well, I can move forward and hopefully have my journey going home and going back to the military on base, do veterans, healing veterans, be a trauma counselor going to college today because of Shakespeare as well. So that's what I got out of it. It's beautiful, I feel good today. That's why I'm a little tired because I'm still in college, I'm doing uh, what they call statistics, math, but I am enjoying it. Yes, we can hear them very well. <laughs> so I want to say yes, that's what I got out of Shakespeare. And meeting wonderful people as yourself, and I'm glad that everybody showed up to uh, support us, support this, because this is a wonderful thing that reached out not only to me, but others as well. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your performance today, and I wish you well in your future. Mary? Mary. Pleasure. Thank you. I thought I did that. <laughs> okay. Can I do one more? Yeah. Okay, good. Can I interview you? Yes, right. I would love to. Oh. So you can take off your mask, so we can, so we can see your whole face. Great. Right. Yeah. I so I'm just going to ask you about the performance today and other things. Ready? My love, though if you must, don't leave your smile to be in my heart. Your kiss on the lift and heal my spirit. Okay. No, it's okay. My oh, thank you. Instead of an oak tree, you carved your name, you carved your name on a sandy beach. Although the waves washed and gently away, we are still there. Surely a swan cannot forget its wings once he has flown and danced between clouds. I should miss you and even dream of you with your skin so evenly bright. And our love, like gunpowder, explodes in pure ecstasy. Wow. <laughs> That's what we have to look forward to in a few minutes. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. Music. Okay. So, here we are at Solano State Prison. Mm. My name is Mary, and we just watched you in a Shakespearean play with Marin Shakespeare, and so I just wanted to introduce myself, and I'm with my new friend. Lewis Branch. So Lewis, you had quite a role in this play, and then you also had a lot of insights in what happened in your comments after the play. So tell me a little bit about why you do Shakespeare here, and tell me how much you enjoyed or, dis or what you got out of the role you just played. Well, uh, I do Shakespeare because uh, there's something inside me that just wants to express itself, and it comes out. Now, I found just a tremendous amount of encouragement from Leslie and from Marin Shakespeare and just in general, and Alejandra. And so I enjoyed the connectiveness, being a team with a role to play, being part of something that's larger than yourself. You also had some insights on your fellow cast members. It seems like you're a pretty good people study. Well, thank you. 
uh, I noticed that they were struggling with their lines. And so one of the things you want to do is you want to find out about yourself. And so this is another journey that you, you find in working with Shakespeare and other people. Uh, they weren't performing their lines up to what I felt, with, in my haughty, arrogant way, what should have been their standards. And it caused me a lot of frustration. And then all of a sudden I just realized that this was a comedy. We were having fun. Right. And, and, and it just, it just, it, it was just a tremendous relief. And I just fell out with humor and I laughed for about 30 to one minute. And then after that, everything was just, just fine. It was just wonderful. It was joyous. Well, you could tell, I could tell by sitting in the front row and watching you how much you were enjoying the play. You had a lot of responsibility in this play, and you seem to wear that as a mantle very well. So um, tell me a little bit about how you took this so seriously. Well, it, it, because it mirrors uh, Caesar, of course. Caesar and, 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 and a kingpin, and in prison we have shot callers and, and things like that. So that's why I wanted... Uh, the, the, the audience to see themselves uh, in the play that we were in the echo right in the day room that, that was very attractive for me and, and and I I just wanted to commit myself to being authentic in that particular role uh, as Big Blue the dope dealer who plotted also to have uh, Listo who was really Caesar uh, killed. Well thank you very much it was masterful and I look forward to your next one. Okay. Thank you so thank much. You so much Mary. Aren't these guys great? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Do I have time for one more? Okay. Do you want to be interviewed? Yeah. So I'm just going to ask you a little bit about your button shirt so you look like a guy. It's pulled together. So, my name is Mary, and I'm going to introduce myself and then have you talk, and I'm going to ask you a few questions just about your performance today and the experience. Okay. Okay. So, hi, I'm Mary here at Solano State Prison. I'm here with my new friend, Virgil Jason Clark. So, Fredrickson? Virgil. Virgil. Rogel. How do you spell that? B I R G I L. Virgil. We got a Virgil here. Okay, so Virgil. I watched you in the play, and you had a pretty big role. You had you played several roles, actually. What was that like for you? For me, it was. For me, it was, or it was, pretty cathartic because I get to be something somewhere else and someone else, rather than just another inmate in prison. Here, when they treat us, treat us like humans, and I get to experience a joy of performing, which I never knew before. A time that I didn't know I had. Well, it was obvious the way you kept all of your roles straight that you had a lot of work to do. Tell me a little bit of what it was like to do the Shakespeare play mirroring uh, life in the prison. Doing the Shakespeare play mirroring, it was, it was pretty, it was fairly easy because I've been, been here for a while, over, over a couple of decades, so I I see the politics that's going on in it in the play, so it kind of mirrored what Shakespeare was actually about and how they conspired against Caesar. So it was, I thought it was an apt depiction of of Caesar's life in the day room. In the day room. So let me ask you this: What did you learn about your, uh, you know, your um, other, other cast members and the people in the audience that watch you and the staff. What did, what did you learn personally? What I learned, everybody put a lot into this. Even those I thought wouldn't remember their lines, they came prepared today to perform. And I, I believe they did a, re a very good job. The staff, they put a lot, a lot of hard work into get, getting it, just getting it done. With, with COVID and everything, the stops and the starts, and I'm trying to get back in it because Shakespeare means a lot to me, as I said before, it meant a lot. 
Well, I was really impressed with all the different roles you were playing. I kept thinking, oh, he's over here, and now he's over here, and now he's in the commercial. I thought, wow, this guy's great. So thank you for uh, your contributions, and I wish you well in your future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. You want to be interviewed as the, as the, back, as the background guy? Why not? You did all the sound. You got to watch it. I did. Okay. Mary? 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 And I came, I said, well, I'll step in and help out whatever you need me to do. But it was a great play. So, you know, I was pleasantly surprised, actually. Do you have a background in um, working with sound? Yes, I do. Uh, I've been doing music all my life, so it's, it was a natural connection for us to come together and do music or do sound for them. Well, lucky for Shakespeare that they found you to help them. So what do you think about this program here uh, as a program at the jail? Uh, I think I think Shakespeare is a unique program. I think it allows you to step out your your comfort zone, allows you to break a lot of barriers and reach into places where you don't necessarily think you would reach, given us being in prison. What do you think it does for the people that are actually in the play? Oh, I think it's a confidence builder. I definitely think it's a confidence builder. What else? Um, I believe it's it's a uh, it just breaks down. Diversity, you know, breaks down walls, breaks down barriers. I believe it breaks down a lot of barriers. So, so are you going to continue to do sound for? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. As long as they allow me to. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, and thank you for helping out with this program. Thank you. Bye bye. Are we good? Okay. I think we're good. We can do more. We can do more. So, um, hi Rudy. Here we are at Solano State Prison. You just finished a Shakespeare play, and it was Julius Caesar, and you played many roles in that play. <laughs> I want to hear about your experience. Um, okay, so we're just actually coming off of a play we did Tuesday night where I had a lead, and there are a lot of guys up here who are doing double time. So this is my second year. Um, we did. Uh, have a program here called POS, which is Performances at Solano, where a lot of guys write their own plays, and Marin Shakespeare would come in and help us put them on. Uh, that's where I began to heal for myself. Um, this program has allowed me to connect the dots for uh, a painful traumatic past where um, the only way I viewed relationships was through drugs, and that came from shooting my dad up at six years old to learn how to, okay, that's how you create a relationship. So this program has allowed me to say, no, there's, there's a more um, direct way to do that now. And I didn't have that tool. Uh, I was in a lot of distortion. So this program allowed me to just strip away and just be me and create my own characters and my own imagination as kind of like reliving a childhood that you didn't get. To have it now is kind of like, I get, I, I, I get it. I get it. That's pretty powerful stuff. It's a... I think everyone here in the program has a story. I think that's what makes it uh, special. A lot of these guys um, are coming out of their shell for the first time, uh, Santiago, uh, Shalabra Stogi, and for them to join us uh, speaks volumes for their courage to step out in, away from the dynamics on the yard and come in here and, and just present something and, and give something back to the community that uh, we wouldn't have normally had a chance to, uh, and this, is, this isn't this is a chance that we gave ourselves on the street. So now to come here uh, as an LWAP, which is Life Without Parole, I look forward to this every year. Uh, there isn't a lot of programs for us at this particular institution. Uh, that doesn't say we can't program. 
Uh, it's just that we have to find innovative ways uh, such as POS, performances at Solano, such as creative writing, such as Marin Shakespeare and uh, other programs. Well, you had played so many roles. I think the interesting part was how you took this play, you and your, and your castmates, took the play of Julius Caesar and you made a parallel to the yard. And tell me a little bit about that. Okay, um, so the, the, there's a scene when they're talking about uh, what happens on the other side of the yard. So uh, that wasn't in there. So I actually wrote their dialogue. Uh, they wanted more meat and potatoes and more correlation to Julius Caesar. So those watching it would say, okay, how can I adapt it to, to today's environment, which is the prison environment? And a lot of that goes on on the yard where it's always someone that worries about what's going on in a different area. Um, but that's just normal. It, on the streets, uh, prison is society condensed. So uh, in here, uh, they don't think that, uh, I mean, all they see is a lot of negative on the, on, on the news. Uh, but there's a lot of positive that goes on. And that when we cross, uh, cross lines and, and are able to meet each other, see each other as humans instead of just an enemy, uh, creative things happen. So that's what I learned. That's a pretty, pretty powerful statement to say that this is society condensed. Um, yeah, it, it's a. Uh, if you think about it, it has its own its own hierarchy, its own its own environment. Um, and for the Elwap who lives in here, uh, we see it as more of this is our home. Unfortunately, uh, we're taken out of society and say this is where you're going to stay. So uh, we look at this as okay, we have to be here for the duration. A lot of people come and they come and they go through, they come back, which is unfortunate. But for us who have to stay here and uh, pretty much live out our lives, we have two choices. One, continue to maintain a negative mindset, continue to live how we want to live, or change for the sake of changing. And, and a, lot, a lot of the guys who have been in Shakespeare, who have gotten out, have not come back. The recidivism rate, I think, is below 1%. And these women who come in, they want us to check in and give us the opportunity to be around a different mindset of people and uh, it's a, it's it's just unrealistic to think that you can have someone in prison change their mind without having the right tools and the right assets to make better decisions we only live off the decisions that we've made through our experience and for some of us our experience is uh, traumatic you know aces which is adverse childhood experiences so I'm learning about bereavement and um, just a lot of issues that I didn't think I had so now that I'm able to identify them when working on them has taken a lot of mental block out and allowed me to do things I didn't think was possible. Like We've written like five plays uh, for POS and we put them on, uh, like the one we did last night, which was for veterans, uh, PTSD, and knowing that uh, more veterans commit suicide than the average civilian, which uh, thinking about my father, you know, I, I understand why his trauma was passed on to me through his actions. So I don't blame him, but I wish that the juvenile justice system had more um, checks and balances when it comes to kids like me growing up through the system from six, seven, eight, nine. Because if, if not, this is where you end up for the rest of your life. Well, I think that should be on the front page of the paper. I want to thank you. Yeah, well, we have a paper here. We're still trying to get it going. I mean, though, like the New York Times. Get out. <laughs> Get out of here. No, thank wow. you. Thank you for thank that. You. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you. My name is Mary, and uh, I'm here with my friend Arno. We are at the Solano State Prison. Arno is getting ready to perform. So tell us a little bit about what roles you're going to play and uh, what you're going to be doing for the next play. Okay, I'll be playing uh, in a. I'll be playing in a play called uh, The Twelve Night, and I'm the brother of Viola. I'm playing Sebastian, and. Thus far, I, I have a few lines. You know, I just want to make sure they're all they're all hurt. 
it, it'll be a little loud in here, but um, I'm very excited for this opportunity. First time on stage in prison in Solano, and this is all post-COVID, so we're all nervous and we're ready to go. Um, how many plays have you been in Shakespeare? This is my first play ever in my life. You know, I, first time ever dealing with Shakespearean lines, and I'm very excited for this opportunity. So, um, what are you getting out of doing this? You're sticking with it. Well, at first I signed up because I wanted to go home earlier. They provide rec credits, you know, and they, they give you some time off. But now I'm all I'm all in it. You know, it's beyond the, the, the good time. It's a very humbling experience, and um, I'm challenging myself. And I want my kids out there, my, my daughter Liliana and my son Christopher, they'll be watching this play on YouTube. And I want to have them see their dad in prison performing. Thank you. They'll be very, so very proud of you. I can't wait to see your performance. Thank you so much for letting me interview you. Thank you. Mary. And I'll talk to you again. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm.